from abandoned islands to old school mines. These are 10 stunning places in Alaska. Number 10, Kiska Island. We start off our Alaskan journey with the little known Kiska Island, which is part of the Rat Islands, which as a whole are a part of the Aleutian Islands of Alaska, also known as the easternmost part of the USA. Yeah, it's true, look at a map. They're so far west, they're actually in the east. On June 6th, 1942, Kiska and nearby Attu Island were invaded by the Japanese. The 10-person U.S. Navy weather station was taken over. One of the servicemen actually managed to escape and hide in the freezing wilderness for 50 days. The Japanese moved in about 5,300 people on the 107-square-mile island. They managed to hold onto the island until July 1943, when U.S. forces destroyed the Japanese garrison on Attu Island. By the time U.S. forces got to Kiska Island, though, the only things left were a few service dogs and fresh brewed coffee. Sadly, around 200 American and Canadian men lost their lives, mostly from friendly fire and booby traps. These days, the island is a protected wilderness, so if you're thinking of hopping on your sea dew and checking the place out, know that you will need special permissions and something bigger than a sea dew. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to mention, there's also an active volcano on the island, and the last confirmed eruption occurred on January 24th, 1962. Number 9. Kobik Valley National Park Do you like national parks but don't like the crowd? Then Kobik Valley is for you. The park is about the size of Delaware, and it sits above the Arctic Circle. The only way to get to it is by chartered air taxi. There are absolutely no roads or trails, and apart from a select few ranger stations, you will be completely on your own. The most famous part of the park is probably the sand dune fields, about 20,000 acres of them. NASA has started funding the studies of these formations because they might be analogous to Martian polar dunes. So yeah, to recap, extremely secluded, about 15,000 visitors yearly, out of this world terrain, no sunsets for about a month, nighttime temperatures reaching minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and above all, the northern lights. Be sure to really plan ahead if you want to experience this wonder of Alaska. Number 8. Diomede. The native name for this city is Injalik, meaning the one over there. It is located on the little Diomede Island, which is our last defense against the Russians. Look at this satellite image. On the left, we have Big Diomede, Russia, and 2.2 miles to the right, we have Little Diomede, USA. The town does indeed have a school with about 40 students. It is considered the most isolated school in the USA. The nearest police station is in Nome. So if you're up to no good, watch out for street justice. The safest and best way to reach the island is by helicopter. And get this, the townspeople get their mail delivered weekly at a cost of about $300,000 per year. So how did this place come to be? It is believed that around 10,000 years ago, the Bering Land Bridge was a thing and Little Diomede would have been considered a part of Siberia. The land was first used for hunting grounds starting about 3,000 years ago. And the only thing that's left is that one city called the one over there. Number 7. Whittier Whittier has recently become a popular port of call for a lot of cruise ships, which doesn't sound so interesting. What makes this place exceptional is its proximity to the epicenter of the largest and most powerful earthquake in recorded North American history. Coming in at a 9.2 magnitude, the second in the world behind the 1960 9.6 magnitude earthquake in Chile. Usually, Whittier makes these lists because it is known as the town under one roof. The Begich Towers condominium is the main housing building in town, and most of the 220 residents live in it. Even the police department and the post office are located inside the condo. There's a lot of abandoned buildings and machines in the area. Most of them were left after the 1960s earthquake. So if weather permits, walking around the vicinity of the town, you can spot a lot of interesting sights. Number 6. Barrow. The official name for this wonderful chili place is Utiagvik. Say that three times fast. It is the northernmost city of the United States, but on a global scale, it only ranks as 11th. But whatever. Those other towns are probably not as cool and don't have the whalebone gateway to the Arctic. 
If you're ever in the area, you might as well venture north some more and see Point Barrel, the northernmost point of the USA. Barrel broke a few milestones when they streamed their local high school's football game. It was the first live stream sports event north of the Arctic Circle in America. The Barrel Whalers have a 33-24 record, which is commendable. Oh yeah, by the way, the native locals have an awesome tradition where they toss people in the air with a blanket. Check this guy out. Looks like fun. Number 5. King Island In 1778, James Cook became the first European to spot King Island. No kings live here, however. It was at one point used by a small tribe of Inupiat, who hunted in the summer months and spent their winters mostly dancing. They still try to get their hunt on during the light hours, but for the most part, everyone gathered in the men's communal house and danced the night away. With the rise of Nome, the tribe's economy was also supplemented by art sales. Unfortunately, by 1970, everyone from the tribe was forcefully reallocated to mainland Alaska. The most surprising part of it is the fact that as of 2010, some of the buildings were still standing. That's some impressive engineering, considering the extreme conditions and the steep cliff location. Number 4. HARP Research Station HARP, the High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program, was a program created by the US Air Force, Navy, and DARPA. What is it? Or more accurately, what was it? The program was all about studying and analyzing the ionosphere, with the ultimate goal being great enhancement of radio communications and surveillance. The facility is located near Gakona, Alaska, and day-to-day -day operations were sometimes given to the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Now, this is where I tell you, if you feel like you're missing some conspiracy in your life, check out this video. And make sure there are no guys in black suits outside of your house. Just peek through the blinds real quick. Number three, Kennecott. Kennecott is one of the more famous places in Alaska, and it earned its place on the National Register of Historic Places in 1978. This mining camp got its name from the nearby Kennecott Glacier, though it is spelled differently due to a clerical error. By 1916, there were five mines operating in the area, the Bonanza, Jumbo, Motherload, Erie, and Glacier. Combined, they produce copper valued at $32.4 million a year. In today's money, we're talking about $750 million. One by one, the mines dried up, and on November 10, 1938, Kennecott became a ghost town as the last train left the station. The camp was left abandoned for about 30 years. The plans were to demolish it all, but that failed too. Locals are happy that the historic buildings have been preserved, and many people that took items from the buildings returned them to the museum. Nice! Number 2. Ice Caves Alaska has some fantastic ice caves, with the most famous being the Mendenhall Glacier Caves. The Mendenhall Glacier spans about 13.6 miles and is part of a protected recreational area. The massive glacier offers amazing views up top, but some people are more interested in what's underneath. Glacier caves are usually created by melting ice that finds its way underneath creating a stream. Beware though, glacier caves are not the most stable. There are many examples of collapses and disappearances of passageways altogether. Before we jump into the best honorable mentions for Alaska, I asked you all to share some stories with me. Thank you. Love learning new and interesting facts. So if you have anything about Alaska, spit it out. Thanks, Storm Armstrong. Hope you like this one too. There are so many awesomely strange places in Alaska. It was hard to fit them all in one video. Heck, there should be a video exclusively for the Aleutian Islands. Here are some of the places that found their way into the honorable mentions. First up, we have the Igloo City Hotel. Well, it was supposed to be a hotel, but the project failed. Multiple times, with multiple owners. Next up, we have the Atka B-24D Liberator plane wreck. In 2008, the site became part of the World War II Valor in the Pacific National Monument. Have you ever wanted to explore some permafrost? The Cold Regions Research and Engineering Laboratory has made that possible with their permafrost tunnel. Located near Fairbanks, this facility is pretty much one of a kind. If you're feeling like hiking the Alaskan wilderness a la Into the Wild, the first place you need to go is Christopher McCandle's Magic Bus. Just know that the trek is dangerous and taxing. In 2013 alone, 
12 people had to be rescued because they did not prepare well enough. Don't be a fool. Number one, ADAC. We have reached our final destination, the southernmost town of Alaska and the westernmost town in the USA. Translated from native Aleut, the name means father. The island has history dating back centuries, but we will focus on more recent events since there's pictures for that. There was a military base there built in the 40s, but by 1997, it was all abandoned. The ADAC Naval Air Station was not a complete loss of resources though. Most of it was repurposed as the ADAC Airport. However, there are some derelict buildings littered around the landscape. The island as a whole has a few abandoned spots, like this church or this fishing boat that just couldn't take it anymore. What's more interesting and beautiful than abandoned buildings? The stunning nature surrounding them. When you venture off the beaten path in a wild place like Adak Island, you have to be prepared for everything. Hiking in Alaska is no small feat. Oh, by the way, Adak is also home to the smallest national forest in the USA, comprising of around 33 trees that were planted there by Brigadier General Simon Bolivar Buckner Jr as a way to boost soldier morale. So, would you spend Christmas on Adak Island? Let us know in the comments below. I love reading all your thoughts and opinions. If you want more World on Earth, subscribe and check out this awesome video.